Hey everyone, welcome to Tech Island. In this video, we look into Spark 3.0 and there are some interesting features which are added as part of the 3.0 release. So this video is part one of the playlist which we are going to release. So stay tuned to Tech Island for more videos on Spark 3.0. So let's jump into this video. So before I jump into Spark 3x version, I wanted to give some understanding on 2x version. What what are the interesting features in 2x version, and um, but what are st still some disadvantages we are facing with the 2x version? So uh, which are covered as part of 3x version? So so 2x in 2x we have something called cost based optimizer. This is uh, a very interesting feature in 2x. Uh, let's see what happens with the uh, CBO. So in Spark 2.0, CBO uh, collects the statistics of the table. It collects the statistics on a particular column, the max values of a particular column and mill values of a particular column and the count of the rows in a table and the null values on so different columns. So at a, at a high level, it collects the statistics of all columns in a table. So these statistics can be used whenever that particular table is queried by other jobs or any ad hoc queries because we have all the statistics the particular query which is fired at a later point of time runs very faster. So this is an interesting feature uh, collecting the statistics. So coming to the next thing is like uh, in Spark 2x, uh, it, CBO has a feature to to choose the right join whether it is a sort merge join or broadcast join so it has that intelligence to choose the perfect join um, as, as part of the CBO this is covered but uh, there is one disadvantage of CBO is uh, although we are collecting all the statistics of the table let's say if the internal table whatever on the table the jobs will query the query or uh, a particular user will query let's say if that table itself is refreshed whatever statistics we have are outdated so any new user who is, who is going to query the table he'll not completely get the advantage of the table he might see some dirty data he might see uh, faster running of the query all this uh, all these things he might get into so in spark 3x version these all are uh, solved so let's jump into spark 3x so in spark 3x there is some interesting feature called adaptive query execution so under adaptive query execution, uh, three major challenges of Spark are covered. So first one is like uh, in dynamically AQE uh, in a short uh, adaptive query execution can optimize dynamically skew joints. So you will not be seeing any skew in the joints which is dynamically hand, handled by Spark. So if you want to know what, what is skew joins, uh, take a look at our video in the below uh, for Spark 2x version, how to solve skew joins. We have uh, covered a detailed video covering the salting technique. So if if, if you're one of uh, people here who are still using 2x, you can uh, refer our video. Uh, if you have upgraded to 3.0 or using 3.0 your development and production environment, you can try out AQE, which we will cover as part of this video. So uh, after skew joins, there is something called shuffle part tensions. Uh, dynamically, Spark can choose now the right required shuffle partitions. So right now, uh, by default, shuffle partitions are 200, but uh, we might need to tune the shuffle partitions to 100 or 20 or whatever may be the number based on the data. So uh, one has to manually choose what uh, right value of shuffle partitions are required for a particular job. It's a developer's uh, thing, but uh, Spark is providing uh, this feature as part of the new release. So the third is like optimizing join strategy, what join to choose, whether it is sort merge join or broadcast join, all these are covered as part of adaptive query execution. So uh, let's uh, move further. So let's see what happens under the wood in adaptive query execution. So uh, generally Spark executes the stages. So let's say uh, there are more stages uh, to be executed. It will go and execute the stages. If it finds some particular stages require some optimization, it optimizes the unexecuted stages. And again, it sees like any stages to get 
to be executed then again it executes it does some dynamic optimizations again again it executes the stage so it's a round circle uh, which continuously tunes dynamically at the runtime till now there is uh, nothing on the runtime dynamically spark can tune the joins or skewness but as part of 3.0 release uh, this can dynamically change the execution plans change the joint strategy all this are covered as part of aqu so this is a very cool feature as part of this release so how we can basically use 3.0 uh, in our in our uh, how how we can solve the issues with 3.0 so coming to the requirements we need to have databricks runtime environment 7.0 uh, and spark 3.0 is mandatory so if you if you are if you are using databricks you have to migrate to 7.0 and spark version 3.0 is required so to get the advantage of uh, all these features which i told you we need to enable this property sparks equal dot adaptive dot enabled equal to true this will uh, this will enable all the uh, before features whatever i talked about this will solve the skewness all these issues so this is a property which needs to be enabled enabled when in the notebook level uh, in the databricks environment so uh, let's not wait further uh, let's jump into the demo i'll show you uh, as part of the demo how to uh, resolve skewness issue using spark 3.0 uh, in this video let's jump into the demo hey guys welcome to the demo so as i mentioned we need uh, databricks runtime of 7.0 and spark to try out spark 3.0 so i created the spark 3.0 cluster with databricks environment 7.0 so if you wanted to try out the new features of spark uh, go ahead and create uh, this cluster with 7.0 so I was using community edition of Databricks to showcase this demo. So it is a free version. Anyone is interested, they can sign up and create this cluster. So let me jump to the demo. So uh, before I uh, before I jump into the demo, I need to I wanted to go through the properties which I'm using currently. So as of now, I'll be disabling uh, adaptive uh, querying because I don't want uh, Spark to handle my data skewness uh, directly. So I'll disable it as uh, i'll disable the property as false so as part of this demo uh, uh, i'll as part of this video i'll be covering spark 3.0 data skewness part and the later videos will cover uh, the properties of uh, uh, spark 3.0 so uh, so uh, okay i'll disable this and i want to disable broadcast join because i don't want to join the two tables uh, i don't want to broadcast any of the tables i wanted to see how spark performs without the broadcast now uh, i'm limiting the shuffle partitions to three to make it simple to understand how the data skewness is happening right so uh, let me go and create this is the syntax which creates data frame one so if you see this uh, code piece of code which creates data frame one and if you see column x uh, column the column id uh, uh, column id uh, occurs has value of x a uh, lot of times and y and z are having limited uh, number of times compared to x which is uh, way uh, more times compared to y and z right so this creates data frame one so now uh, uh, there is uh, one more data frame which i'm creating which is data frame two uh, with the same column id and the particular value x here also occurs a lot of time and yz are occurring limited times so the both both the tables are skewed now so if i perform any join on these data frames definitely uh, it when uh, one particular partition run for a longer time and it causes the performance issue so in the next step i tried uh, joining the two data frames if you see uh, we could clearly see uh, when we go to the spark jobs and these are the different stages which are uh, executed as part of this join condition so if you see the shuffle partitions three is the shuffle partitions which i mentioned on the top if you click on three uh, this is the place when the join happens uh, we could definitely see there is a data skewness uh, on the executor so this one single partitions uh, which are run for a longer time because of the data skewness uh, in the join right so this definitely says there is no parallelism in the job so all the advantage of parallelism of spark is is not achieved because of this we will not be able to take the advantage of all the executors on the cores which we provided uh, so because our job runs on a single partition so this is this is a bad uh, way of uh, doing 
So now this, this is the basic problem in 2x version where we solve using salting techniques and other approaches. You can uh, watch our video in the description as well. So now let me uh, demo how to solve this issue uh, with 3.0. So before jumping to 3.0, I wanted to show the plan of 2x join which I used. So if you see, uh, it's a sort of merge join. Uh, we generally need to to read this uh, plan. Generally, we need to go from bottom to top. So if you see, as it is a sort of merge join, as I said, uh, this is the data frame one. Uh, because of sort of merge join, it sorts the columns, uh, join columns of each data frame and then joins it. So it uh, sorts the ID column of data frame one and uh, again it sorts the id column id column of uh, data frame 2 because now the columns respect to columns of two data frames are sorted it applies uh, sort merge join on those so it's a typical sort merge join it's a standard join which happens in spark so because of data skewness this might run for a longer time and uh, be, uh, be run for a longer time we could clearly see from the stage uh, graph it runs for a longer time on a single partition so definitely this is a problem so let's see how this issue is solved in 3.0 in 3.0 um, we will enable a property called adaptive uh, querying uh, i'll set this property as true now so if I if I uh, run the same join once again, um, let's see what is happening if I run the same join. If I open the stages, so in these two data frames it has in these two stages it has read the table, and now if you see the later stage, there is no skewness. So there are multiple uh, partitions and all the partitions are almost utilized. There is no skewness here. So that's the advantage of adaptive uh, execution. Spark uh, dynamically, it uh, checks and it uh, optimizes the plan and it it optimizes the plan and it optimizes the data and so that data skewness is uh, resolved. So that's what I was talking about. Initial example, it has a data skew. Now if you see all the, all the parties are completely utilized and we'll get the parallelism as well so so let's see the plan of uh, uh, 3.0 adaptive querying execution so before uh, the one in, in the in before you without using adaptive query execution I showed you a sort merge join but now if you see uh, still it is doing a sort merge join but uh, it is using something called adaptive uh, spark plan which under the hood take care of this data skewness uh, and uh, it distributes the data across the different partitions so if you could see here there is something called uh, adaptive spark uh, uh, plan uh, which is used so i'll make more videos on this plan how to debug the plan uh, so that it might be hel helpful for the people so this is what I what I wanted to show as part of the part one video series of 3.0. Uh, hope you guys liked it. Uh, I will post this video. I will post the code uh, in, in under the description, and uh, you can use that. Uh, and we have made one more blog uh, for this, so you can go through the blog as well. So this is the blog which we have for Spark 3.0, where the detailed explanation of um, uh, everything which i gone through this video is there and the code is also there and uh, about how to resolve data skewness uh, please go through this uh, if you like this video give uh, a like subscribe to our youtube channel tech island thanks everyone